Uh, you know, you start counting more than I have fingers and toes. That's just not fair. That's 22 is not that hard. I'm just saying you got you to keep the standards. Fingers and toes. Fingers and toes. I do have a standard. You just don't. Me, me <laughs> all right. Welcome back to another episode, all you crazy people listening to us. Hey, all you crazy sci-fi and fantasy fans. It's time for your daily dose of shenanigans over here at the Blasters and Blades podcast. Just three nerdy veterans geeking out over our science fiction passions and fantastical fantasies. A place where magic is king, the sky is the limit, and space is the place. The podcast that puts the fun in dysfunction. Without further ado... Today we're going to mix things up, and well, I, I guess it's not mixing it up too bad since we just aired one uh, about a week ago, but we're going to do another book review. Um, so we're going to talk about the Renegade Star Universe by author Jay and Chaney. Uh, Doc and I both read this back in, what, 2021, I think it was, Doc? Is Something that right? like that. I, I've read lots of books and had a few sleeps since then, but it was very <laughs> but, good because it did stand out, and when you said, hey, let's go ahead and do this, I was like, sure. And the reason we're doing that is because Cheney's crazy and he's putting all 16 books in a, a digital box set and selling it for 99 cents. Because there's um, no way you want a physical box set of 16 books at once. Oh, my God. You could kill somebody with that. Like, just drop it on them and they're dead. <laughs> Can you imagine if you're, like, moving things around your house and you drop that on your foot? Oof. Because I've dropped regular books on my foot and they hurt. Like, can you imagine this? Wait, you feel your foot? You don't? I mean, parts of it. <laughs> but anyway since it's on sale we decided to go ahead and do the book review we've been talking about doing for a while so if we get any minor details wrong please forgive us it's been about a year but it's Dryer's one of those books addle -brained and i'm just a hot mess but um at least you got the hot part i just got addled um, no i've only got the hot part because <laughs> i'm in georgia <laughs> but uh all right so uh let's define our terms for for this book review um, we're going to review the novel by several facets. So the summary, which is the book synopsis, uh, most of the time it's straight from the blurb or the back of the book. And we're going to talk about the book cover, um, the image, the font, the typesetting, the coloring, all the usual things you like about pictures. Um, then we're going to talk about the characters, the, who the main characters are. Do we like them? How did they look, act? Were they believable? Were they sympathetic? That sort of thing. And also Doc likes to talk about if they're well-rounded. Uh, nothing bugs her more than flat characters. I've heard yes. you complain. I know. The you... only thing I like flat are flat abs. We all have I mean, something to try for in our visual candy. But Yes. All right. So then we talk about the plot, which is just, you know, the general concept for the plot arc, story arc. Was it action packs? Was it a mystery? Was it easy to follow? Did it lag in places? Were there any parts that just didn't seem believable to us? Obviously, you know, this is fiction. So we're suspending our disbelief. So we're believable in the context of the universe. Then we'll talk about the world building. How fleshed out was the world? Um, did we buy it? Could we envision ourselves there? The good, the bad, and the ugly. And then paired with that, the description. Um, so did the author give you the details you need to visualize the things that he set up in this universe? We'll talk about their narration when applicable, which is in this case, I listened. I don't. Did you listen or read it, Doc? Uh, I read it. I think. Okay. Yeah. So um, so we'll talk about the audiobook. Um, was it good quality? both in the post-production and the narration? Did the voice of the narrator work? That sort of thing. Um, and spoiler for this one, it did. But Luke Daniels is freaking awesome. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no he's you're smooth right. like water. I have a lot of... Luke Daniels is definitely in my uh, top audio narrator. I tend to he's, buy his books. He's amazing. I like him. Uh, and then we've got any major themes that were that we feel like were discussed. And as usual, um, if we miss some that you thought were themes in the book, when we post this, comment in the comment section. It's it's always fun to discuss those kind of things. Um, so sometimes you know things that stick out to you won't to us, and vice versa. So it's always a good place to have a conversation on the topic of themes in a book. Um, even weirder if you ask the authors themselves about themes, because most of the time they're like, "What you saw that? I just wrote a fun story." Um, but, uh, and then we'll talk about, you know, finally, overall, you know, this is where we give our generic opinion of the totality of the book. Uh, and then what would we rate it on a, you know, zero to, well, one to five um, star rating. Um, and that, that's our, that's our pl platform. Um, we just so, do a weapons rating? One to five weapons ratings? I mean, this is yeah. blasters and blades. Do you want to do like stabby or, or, or shooty weapons for our, for no, our we can do we, we, dealer's choice. All right, so we'll mix it up every time, and we'll just do random weapons. Like, this gets five grenades. 
Grenades are fun. <laughs> they are those, fun. are those are to whom it may concern weapons. All right. Or as I call them, little seeds of freedom. All right. So uh, the book summary from the back of the book. And Nick Garber is not here. He's doing the whole uh, Homeland Security thing. And No, he's uh, not. He's doing a con this weekend. Shh. They don't know that. Now they do. There you go. Way to out his cover. I was going to yes, give him credit do. for I posted working. it in the group. <laughs> they don't know when we're recording this. Oh. <laughs> no, honest. He's totally at work. If you're his boss, he was totally at work. We're just going to go with that and move on. But so this is for a limited time only. The complete mega box set for the acclaimed Renegade Star series is here. 16 books, 10,000 pages, over 15,000 positive reviews. <clears throat> uh, Jace Hughes is a renegade. That means taking almost any job that comes his way, no matter the situation. So long as he can keep his ship floating, he's free to live the life he wants. But all that changes when he meets Abigail Pryor, a nun looking for safe passage out of the system. So I grew up with a Catholic dad. Uh, I know nuns are dangerous, so that should have been his first giveaway. I'm just going to throw that out there. That's me interjecting into this reading of the bio on the back of the book. But all right, back to the thing. Uh, too bad there's something off about the cargo she's carrying. Jace knows he shouldn't ask too many questions, but when odd star sounds start coming from the inside the large metal box, he can't help but check it out. Big mistake. Get the complete Renegade Star series for one low price, 10,000 pages, over 1 million copies sold, and more than 15,000 reviews on Amazon. This epic military sci-fi is a fan favorite. And clearly, since you heard our introduction, it's one of our favorites. So there's that. Uh, I guess that means that the overall rating is not a spoiler. But anyway, all right. So did you agree with the summary from the uh, box set? I think the summary from the box set worked pretty well. Yeah, I like that he hinted at, or he like told you how many pages were in it and how many reviews, because it definitely, like, I didn't realize it was so big. His stories feel a little short, and I'm not saying like, no, they, they go are, like candy because they're so fast paced. So yeah, I didn't realize they like were that candy. long. You know, you just sit there, or a, a giant bowl of popcorn, and you just sit there and eat it, and then you get to the bottom, and you're like, what happened? Yeah, somebody else. There's a hole in my bowl. I don't know what happened to it. I've done that. So, but you know, this box set has over ten thousand pages. So, I mean, that's going to keep anybody busy for a hot second. If yeah. not, then you definitely have like a speed reading master's degree or PhD. Yeah. And 10,000 pages would be, see, they say um, what average 300 pages, uh, 300 words a page is rough estimate. So that's 3 million words. Holy garbage. I'm not sure you have that much that many words in you, Jr. I don't know. Uh, which, yeah, wow, that's huge. Uh, so that means just based on some quick math, his books got longer, deeper into the series. So anyway, that's uh, that's insider baseball stuff that you listeners and readers don't care about. So we're going to move on to the book cover. So let me share that real quick. Well, they might if they do care. They should definitely comment in the in in it that Jr. is wrong. Fair, but you know, I try. We try to keep this fan focused and focused on the readers. I know, but I just love it when people tell you that you're wrong. I know you do, but so you know, we we definitely don't want to be the. This is how you author podcast. There's a bazillion of those out there, and if you're looking for one of those, Larry Korea and Steve Diamonds, the Writers Dojo, amazing, uh, and we can't compete with that. So instead, we're just going to do our shenanigans because that's fun, and fun is what it's all about, people. But so this is the book cover. I'm going to zoom in on parts. This is for the box set. I like the 3D graphic they use. And then let's see if I can zoom in. Uh, so you see the art of the cover of the spaceship. And for this time, we actually see it from the front, which is nice. A lot of people do the spaceship booty thing going on where you see the back of the ship instead of the front. And, and so this is just, it makes it a little bit different, which I like. They like big uh, thrusters and they cannot lie. Absolutely um oh my god becky look, okay never mind um <laughs> I, I like that the image on the 3d round carries through all the way back so you can see him standing on what looks like it could be a mountain or an asteroid or whatever uh, and then it carries on through the books i like the um ship um coming over the horizon almost of the books like i, I really do like the way he he did this he hires some top-notch cover artists i've always liked his cover art um, and so, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm digging this. What about you, Doc? Oh, I think it's great. I like that it's not all black. Yeah. 
And uh, so you got those, you got those nice pops of color, but even then without those, like the, the lasers and stuff, it's still a colorful book. Yeah. yeah. And so it, what you're seeing is the I'm black. Not sure how that much that matters in eBooks, but it still matters to me as a reader. Yeah. So the, the reason you see so much black is because the way they, and I'm going to mess up all the technicalities, but if you uploaded this, you wouldn't see anything but the actual image itself. So the ship over the books and then the, the box set. No, 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 no. I'm black. talking on the cover here. No, no, I know. I'm just saying, so you're saying how colorful it is and it looks kind of dark, but part of that is the way they design images. Cause I grabbed this from the copy designed to be uploaded into things as opposed to just a standalone picture. And so that's why there's so much black in the background. And I don't understand the specifics. It's not the black in the background that I was referring to. <laughs> it's just, you have like the deep, rich blues. Okay. There's so much blacks in sci-fi. They're like, oh, it's space. It must be black. No. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. It does have, I mean, it's still dark, but it still has enough color that sticks out. And that makes, because they did the dark blue instead of the midnight black, it makes the thrusters uh the the movement from that really really pop um so the, and then the colors around the almost silhouetted around the ship above the box set nick really, really needs to listen to this because you're being all artsy fartsy for him i've learned a thing or two from him um i still prefer black and white line drawings over some of the colored ones but maybe that's just a color line to me because i can see everything um i think um if people started drinking every time we mentioned i was colorblind we might have to buy them new livers that's becoming somewhat of a thing. <laughs> but all right. So uh or just the important let them regrow them. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh so does livers this... regrow livers do that, JR already. Don't bother me with your pesky made up science. So would the most important question of a book cover, would this sell you on the book? Would this make you buy it if you weren't yes. already a fan? If I saw this at Barnes and Noble, I would definitely pick it up. Okay. Now this uh, this is only available in ebook, and it's because it's a box set for the whole series. It's limited time. If you listen to this after the box set is for sale, he does have several smaller box sets that release them in like three book arcs that you could buy for digitally, or he has them individually, uh, individually on audiobook and individually on print. So if you're a paperback reader and you want to get it, all of that is still available. This is just a special, you know, thanks to his readers, he's putting it all out together in one box set. Uh, which I will be buying as soon as it goes live on the 24th of April. Um, so yeah, I think I think the book, aside from just the aesthetically pleasing nature of it, it does give a good indication of what the book is about. Um, I like the the kind of stories that it represents in the space adventure kind of thing. So it would definitely sell me in regards to the novel. If I knew nothing else about it but the picture, I'd still probably pick up and read the back. So. All right, so next we're going to talk about the characters. So I'll briefly list who the three main characters are, and then uh, we'll say what we think about them, and uh, and then we'll we'll dive into each individual character. So we've got Captain Jace Hughes, as mentioned on the, the description. He's a renegade or a pirate operating in the Deadlands uh, who takes odd jobs that aren't strictly legal, which is basically uh, the Deadlands in this universe or space that isn't claimed by any spacefaring nation. So it's sort of the wild, wild west, as it were. And the overarching theme of that is that the West is sort of dying, not because it's dying, but it's just being pacified or claimed much like our West did. So the frontier is, is fading away. And that's sort of the overarching back. And that's where he's at. We've got Abigail Pryor. The, uh, she's a secretive nun from an obscure religious order, the Church of the Homeland. Um, three guesses what that church is about. If you were right when we get there, you can tell us in the comments. And then we've got Lex. She's the albino girl with the strange tattoos and even more unusual and mysterious past. Uh, uh, you forgot somebody? All right. Who are you thinking about? And then we'll go from there. Uh, Sigmund, you know, the AI Ziggy. You would like the robot because he has yeah, no emotions that are real. That's just because he doesn't have real emotions. They're synthetic. That's why you like him, isn't it? I know. I do identify with this. I'm allergic <laughs> to emotions. I knew you were part cyborg. All right. So he's the AI for the Renegade Star. He's uh, officially his title, I think, was Sigmund. That was his, the name assigned to him at creation. But everybody on the ship, including him, calls him Ziggy, which always made me think of um, the, the AI in uh, Quantum Leap. I think that's what they call him, right? 
I have no idea. I, I could be making this up. And if I am, um, I blame the coffee not being hot enough or something. Insert excuse here. Um, so he's... Um, can see you with it. <laughs> uh, he's in the series. So obviously, you know, he. I can see him qualifying as a character. Um, and he's the sort of character that's full of salt and hey, piss and AI's bay, have rights too, man. Absolutely. Uh, so he's he's sassy, which is another reason Doc probably likes him. But his humor is all sort of drawl and British. So it's a little bit dry. Sorry, Tim, if you're listening. Um, but I, I dig that too. So, I mean, yeah, I could see him qualifying as a main character. All right. So now that we've established who the characters are, since you just mentioned Ziggy, what did you think about him overall? Uh, well, you know, I just love a sassy character that has a lot of fun. <laughs> Is and, it because you're you're a sassy character? Is that what this is about? Self-identifying? It's because I think I'm a sassy character, and I don't know if I am. I think I'm just probably a wise ass. That's fair. That's fair. I am not going to touch that with a ten foot fall. And I'm going to tell you what I think instead. Um, <laughs> because he was the AI, there was there, I don't think there's a lot of character growth with him. Um, I, I think, you know, when you start getting AIs that have character growth, you start talking about did they become sentient? And I don't know that they really address that to that level of philosophical angst in this series. This is definitely a, a, just a, a series that was a lot more fun. Uh, but he does sort of serve, so I can see what you're talking about. He sort of serves as an anchor uh, that keeps everybody grounded, uh, or at least keeps you, the reader, grounded on what's going on as everything else is changing. He's sort of like your your North Star, I guess. Yeah, so well, I, I, I can see that. I think some of it is I really enjoy that character that interjects like the, the sarcastic asshole comment that I would want to be making. And then when I read it, I'm like, oh, it's even better. Do you ever go and read those comments in books and be like, mm, I could have come up with a better one-liner? Maybe. I get the impression you come up with these because you've tried all of them on your brothers. My poor brother. Somebody really should comfort them. They're so <laughs> <laughs> They've been stuck with me for years. Uh, but this isn't the Saskia Therapy Hour. We'll do that another episode. But, I don't do um, that. <laughs> uh, the other episode could be i don't know the 12th day of never um so what about captain jace hughes the main character or the, at least the titularly named main character so what do you think about jace uh jace was fun um i enjoyed him like i i don't know ziggy kind of just stole the show for me and that's the one that i remember the most right now sorry okay. but I mean, he's a pirate i do love you know Han, the Han Solo. He wasn't quite as cool as Johnny Depp's pirate, but you know. But he has a spaceship. <laughs> He's also a spaceship, so there's no no like wind salt air brushing his wind his hair in the wind and uh, styling it for him. But um, he was a likable character, um, you know. Okay, so I will push back on the Han Solo rogue part because I get where you're going with the character archetype. But unlike Han Solo, you actually see Jace doing some shady stuff. Uh, Han Solo, they told you he was a rogue. They said, you know, oh, he's the... Okay, blah, but blah, if blah. you read the books, you see Han Solo do some shady shit in the books. It's been a while since I've read the books and then Disney decanonized them, so... Disney can decanonize whatever it wants. It doesn't make it right. Fair, fair. All right, so he does have his standards... Days is a dirty yep 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 all right but we're here to talk about jay and cheney's renegade star but so i do think i do think uh jace has his standards um and he's sort of he's operating in a sort of gray area of in a lawless land so i, I don't know piracy implies so, that so he's, are you saying that he's more like mal from firefly then yeah that's actually i think a better comparison because you know I you like do that. see him on screen do some shady shit uh, the one thing I didn't like was the, and I know why they did it, like from a from a writing perspective. But he was slurping on that hard candy all the time, which if I was pro if I had read it, probably wouldn't have been that big a deal because you didn't comment on it and you you mostly read it. I know you listened to some of them, um, but the in the audio format, oh my god, that slurping was driving me bonkers. I felt like I was like back at the kitchen table with the kids. I'm like, no, chew with your mouth closed. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, I get it. But I also don't really like sound effects in my audiobooks. This wasn't like sound effects added. This was all done by the narrator. 
So it wasn't like you think about the pings and bips and whatever. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's just literally what was in the text. It just, I didn't feel like it translated well, but that's, that's more of a stylistic thing. Um, and you might not even be annoyed by it, dear listener, but what I really enjoyed was watching him grow from sort of the loner type into the sort of guy that you'd want on your side in a pinch. He's not a perfect character, but let's be fa- let's be real; those are boring. Um, but he was believable. Um, overall, he's the kind of guy you drink a beer with, and I'd say he was well rounded. So, anything you want to add, or we move on? Ziggy's a perfect character. Ziggy is an AI. Uh, so, what did you think about Abigail Pryor, the other one of the other main characters? Um, you know. I like assassins. They're kind of fun. And she's that mix between a maternal lovable assassin and a monk. And so she seemed like somebody I could be friends with. And I liked that. Um, at like all good maternal figures, she kind of uh, balances Jace and uh, helps trim off some of his rough edges. But you just called a, um, an assassin maternal. I don't know that you know what maternal means. <laughs> you know what? I used to worry about that a lot when I was pregnant. That I and I haven't told my child yet. So I'm doing good. You know, I'm gonna take the notes. I'm gonna take the notes that we take from this episode because you wrote your answers ahead of time too. So I knew you were gonna say that. Um, but I'm gonna take those and update my my uh, book review on the website. Because that's just a hilarious, and I'm not going to give you any credit for it. So let's see if the readers notice. What? Jerk. <laughs> this is why your mom likes me better than you. It's also possibly true. I do agree that um, that Abigail was an easy woman to like, um, and she was definite foil for Jace, in that she was all about you know duty, honor, obligation. Um, I think from a writing perspective, that was probably done by design. She did sort of balance out Jace's rough edges, um, which I liked. Even her name sort of screams religious order. Abigail Pryor, just, you know, a priory. It just, I I get Prior conviction. That too. uh, That fits too, but that would be spoiler. So we're going to have to let that one pass. Uh, In the time before the book started, and I believe there are some prequels to this universe that I haven't read yet. Um, but, uh, she went on a mission, uh, to a secure union facility to rescue Lex that you hear about secondhand, but even secondhand, when you hear about what she did to get this girl out, like she's a certifiable badass, which was kind of cool. Uh, I like that Cheney, when he writes female characters, he doesn't just slap tits on a dude and call it good. Like he writes women that are women who also do cool things and everything she did, it, it didn't feel like, oh, right. This, you know, five foot nothing puny woman is beating up 7,000 foot tall giants, right? Like, like it was all believable. And there are ways to do all of that, even with the size difference. I'm not saying it's not possible, but you at least have to make a nod, I think, towards biology. Um, And he definitely does that. And I really like that about her. And I know if any of you listen to our badass women episode, you know, uh, certain somebody and I butted heads. And if you want to listen to that episode, it's funny for her to tell me I'm wrong. But for me, like, having done this stuff for real, Doc, come on. Having done this, that kind of stuff for real, even in my limited capacity, like there are certain in guys that are smaller too have to do this, right? Like if you're a dude who's only five foot three and you're fighting a guy that's six foot two, like there are certain allowances you make in your fighting style. And he, he factored that in, I think, with her, which made her even cooler because not only was she a badass, she's a smart badass. So anything to add about that? No, I know you get I all... recognize your limitations. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, so we'll move on to Lex because you can't hate me when you're talking about a little girl, right? Like, because she's young, so Have her you young ears. Okay, you could, but I'm trying to like goad you into behaving. All right, so what do you think about Lex? Um, I mean, she's a ten year old girl, and I liked her. Um, at least I think she was. I could be off by a year or two. Um. It's always hard for me to gauge the age of a kid in a book. Unless they and tell I, us. It, and then I always end up disagreeing with them about the age. That's fair. A lot of people forget what they were like at certain ages. So if you don't have kids of your own, you're describing like your toddler acting like they're 20. And I'm like, oh, have, you, have you met any toddlers? Uh, not this book specifically, but it's, it's a generic issue. Well, yeah. And the, the other issue particularly, I, I'm... Blah. 
is when they're dealing with young kids sometimes. Like I my background is I've dealt with more developmentally delayed kids than than most probably parents have. And so I'm generally like, really? Are they really like that at that age? I think you're you I think you're overthinking this and that you got got it off by like a year or two. <laughs> That's why I'm saying I I I like it better that they didn't because then I'm not like, is that really what that person but She's got the sassy mouth and attitude of my 10-year-old, so I think that's about right. And Cheney's a little bit um, – he likes to have fun, and it's gonna, we're going to be nice. So oh, I, think I thought he, you were going to say something like Cheney's kind of young, so who knows? Well, well, he is. He's younger, but, like, I, I definitely think uh, Cheney's in touch with his inner child, and it makes the characters, when he writes them like that, a lot more fun because uh, he's speaking what he knows, which is why I'm friends with him because he's awesome. You act like that's a bad thing. No, I'm giving that as a compliment. Doc's like, what are you talking about? Shut up. We don't insult people. Um, so I would definitely agree. She's definitely more girl than woman. No, I, I, never... I adore Cheney. I think he's absolutely adorable. And he looks like he just graduated like high school or college. Like I, I met him at Dragon Con and, and I wanted to ask him if he was old enough to be drinking. <laughs> he's just one of those lucky guys that's got that baby face. He's going to age so wonderfully that I, in, in like 20 years, we're going to be looking at him and going, just shut up. Yes, yes, we will. Um, so I definitely liked her. You do get to watch her grow up some through this course of the series. Um, but I don't know how to go any more in depth without giving spoilers. Um, overall, I'll say she's one of my favorite characters, mostly because she is sassy and I do like the sassy characters. Um, but she also, because she has that childlike wonder um, as she looks at some of the things because of her uh, upbringing starting in the lab, which is all we're going to say because that's not that deep into the series when you find that out. Uh, but so, so she has that sort of all things are new. She reminds me a little bit of the girl from, um, what was it? The multi-pass fifth element, the girl. Um, Do you mean river song? No, no, no. Fifth element, the multi-pass, the, um, the girl with Bruce Willis. Yes. I know uh, which one you're talking about. River song is serenity and firefly. Oh, you are paying attention. No, she's the one that was like the girl that was created to save the world. And then she's like so naive to the real world that she's like watching the internet and experiencing yeah. everything for the first time. Che uh, Lex, because of her upbringing, reminded me a little bit of that sort of archetype where everything is new to her. Yeah, I that archetype is really great for explaining things in books because like somebody is explaining it to, to the character. So it helps get away from like long diatribes. And you can do it in dialogue that way, or you can get the character discovering it themselves with like the try fail cycles that, that yeah, works. And but you have to have a good plausible reason for that. And sometimes I think people just reach for that archetype because it's easy to 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 do it. But uh, Cheney did a really good job of making it a very plausible, very in story realistic reason for why she's like that. Which I appreciated because it's not lazy storytelling. Absolutely. Um, I think the only other reason that generally I buy is if it's not amnesia, which also it's been so overdone because of the soap operas that I don't think that really is, has the impact it used to. But well, I, I think the main your brain damage, I think you probably it might hit a little closer to your age. Possibly. Um, but I, I think the man at a time, like if someone was on ice for a while because of like cryo sleep or whatever, like you can get away with it because the world has changed while you were on sleep. Uh, but generally speaking, you're right. That's a hard one to pull off without a plausible reason. And he definitely gave it one with Lexi. So I think I liked it. Mm -hmm. um, so what did you think of um, the the growth of the characters overall? Uh, I thought it was talking about growth of character overall. When you're talking about a 16 book series that we've both gone through, it's, it's tricky because oh. You forget what's spoiler and not spoiler. I do like the growth of the characters. I think that a lot of it makes sense. Some of it was really fun. Some of it, as usual, with any kind of character growth, is a little painful to see. Yeah, but life's like that, so <clears throat> so it fits. I know. And then I, I agree. I I do agree with you that it's hard to answer this one in a series context because. It's so it, it would be so spoilery, and we try not to do that. Really, really. Yeah, hard. I will say it's not like one of those where you read it and you're going, "Oh my gosh, will you get with the 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 program already?" Type thing. Like there's consistent growth throughout the 16th books, and kind of comes and starts and goes for some people, but so does personal growth in real life. And he doesn't do the. 
the the some people put in the long going series the romance of will they won't they it's like just kiss her or find somebody else already like that annoys the hell out of me like come on like you've been at this I will for how say long? this one after a while I just lose interest in it the, oh that kind of back and forth yeah that kind of back and also in real life I'm very ADD yeah I get that um, so you're right that the character growth doesn't happen all at once especially for Jace with him it's like two step forward one step step back sort of progress arc. So he's basically like an overgrown teenager. Um, but it is there. Ouch, Doc, you wound me. Um, with the other characters, I think it's more mature in that they started off a little more well-rounded. Um, you see some character growth in the same way um, with some of the secondary characters. And there are plenty of those as well. But because the other characters started at such a good point, it's not so much that they're growing as people they're they're just learning as the world around them changes and reacting to it but that's a different kind of character growth than like you know what i mean like the the character itself isn't growing they're just learning more if that makes sense that grows it, it i guess i just i don't know if i'd classify it the same but i don't know how i'd classify it so we'll throw it in there um but uh were there any other main characters or was that the, these four it for you i think that this cast of characters is definitely uh the main characters i think and i think four is definitely enough i think sometimes people get a little too crazy with how many characters yeah i think you can get so ambitious that you forget what's you fun about books is you do not need a dictionary or a spreadsheet to still have fun and keep track of everything like there are people who like that and sometimes i get i get into it and i like that too but Sometimes it's just fun to have a nice, fun book to sit down, relax, and enjoy with. Yeah. Um, I do like... Um, the fun thing when you read a series that's more established with a huge fan base is sometimes you have the wiki so you can cheat um, if you forget that's who the characters true. are. That's still but, a spreadsheet, though. Fair. Uh, the other thing you have going for you, uh, at least if you're doing the ebooks. Is you can do a, a search within the document to find the character, and you can skim if you forget who's who. Um, so, or some authors will put like headers at the end of every POV or the beginning of every POV switch, in which case you can check the header and be like, oh, okay, that's Bob. I know, I remember him now. Um, that's not as big a deal with Cheney because the cast of main characters is so small, and because it's a smaller pirate ship, renegade ship, however you want to classify it, um, it definitely limits the amount of people which means that you sort of force everybody to interact because they're in that confined space um and so there's benefits to that that i like the same sort of benefits you'd get in the one act plays where there's no scene setting change um where you get to know the person a lot deeper and, and mm -hmm. i like that so but all right uh so we're gonna move on to talk about the plot but first we're gonna pause while we shamelessly oh, shill for the man here comes your next romp in the graveyard in hunters for hire a new urban fantasy adventure by best-selling author Jonathan Yanez. A guy down on his luck puts sign twirling and rideshare driving on the back burner to track down the supernatural for a pretty penny. Find out what happens when John Hunter enters the secret underworld. Download your copy and start listening today. Now available on Amazon and Audible. All right, thank you for sticking with us at that commercial interlude, and uh, we're back. And mm -hmm. Doc did not go crazy um, telling me I was wrong, so that's a plus. So we're talking. I never about go crazy telling you you're wrong. Mm, okay, so what did you think about the plot, Doc? I enjoyed it. I thought that there was a good overarch throughout it, as well as um, individually in within each book. So I'm I'm not sure I would pick up just anywhere with this but i mean it's on sale as a box set so don't pick up at book five but pick up at book one um okay so yeah i so, mean it's, it's, there's a lot you go into it more you you like really obsessed about the plot with this one it was kind of adorable so, so one of the things um and if you think she's stumbling, she had written her notes and for whatever reason, word eight part of it. So she's like, oh, crap, what did I write? But uh, one of the things you hit on throughout this interview already and in that when you're in your original show notes is you liked how fast paced it is. Because you listened to this one um, when you were listening because you did a little bit of both. I remember because we talked about it at the time. I bugged you to read it. Um, and you were talking about that the, the audio book was so fast paced because the story was. You really noticed it while you were at work because you're like, holy crap, have we finished it already? 
Um, and so, you know, slower paced books can can make the workday. You've you've told me this before, and correct me if I'm wrong. You said slower books can make the workday seem longer for you, but yeah. faster books make it go by. And I remember you telling me that this one, like, oh, the day's over. Okay, I get to go home now. So yeah, no, this was definitely in the in that vein, and I really did enjoy it. It worked nicely for me. Um, so like most of the space opera and, and, uh, military sci-fi that I like to read, this was definitely action-packed. Uh, so it had me hooked. <clears throat> um, there were times where I had to go back and re-listen because I real, I knew I was going to be writing the review and I'm like, oh crap, I was so into it. I forgot to take notes, um, uh, which, which is annoying, but it's a good sign. It means that the author did their job. Um, the overarching sort of arc of the series um, was about a crew on the run from the government and they were looking into the secrets of the universe. Each individual book obviously has its own plot within the the standalone novel. Uh, but then there's the overarching plot that carries through the whole book. Um, it's definitely a sort of origin story for a post-Earth galaxy, uh, which is the Church of the Homeland. Earth is a myth to these people, which is definitely a sci-fi trope, but it's a fun one. So, you know, it's there. It's It persists for a reason. Um Except obviously we're on Earth, so we know it's real. Um, but uh, this definitely had some. What was that, Doc? Nothing. Sure I was okay. teasing you. I know what your mom said. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. What is you never listened to that? Talking? Um, so this had definitely had sort of Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code vibe to it. Except I think obviously it was set in space. Um, so it's that that mystery that they're sort of searching for. Uh, I don't think it ever really lagged like you talked about in the pre-show and, you know, I reminded you here. Um, and it's bad when I'm the memory on this episode, Doc. You've got to step up your game. You know what? Uh, <laughs> I read a lot more than you. <laughs> this is also true. Um, it didn't really ever lag for me. The adventure was nonstop. Um, there were enough lulls, obviously, where you didn't get, like, exhausted. Um, I definitely could suspend my disbelief for the premise. So I'd call this a win for for Cheney. Um it was interesting. Setup was well executed. I couldn't really ask for much more. So, yeah, that's that's it. So, you you got anything to add, or are you satisfied with my rambling? Your rambling is entertaining sometimes. I'm gonna write that in my calendar and call it a win. All right. So the next is the world building in the description. Um, and again, these are the these two questions you got hosed on because it deleted your answers. So, do you want me to go first so you can you go first and I'll just make fun of you. That works. All right. Uh, and this is, uh, if we hadn't discovered this while the show was live, we would have fixed this in pre-production, <laughs> but she's sending me frantic notes. Like, I don't remember what I said. It deleted all my answers. The all dog right. ate my home. Word ate my homework. Word, word ate your home. Word is a dog. It annoys me sometimes. All right. So this is the area where I felt like normally in a book, like on my written reviews on my website, I separate world building description into two line items and I evaluate them separately for, for the purposes of. Um, the podcast interviews, because they often have a lot of overlap, it just makes sense so we don't bore you to put them together. Um, but I think this one, for different reasons, you'll see, I think I'm going to split it up. So for the world building, I, I kind of have mixed feelings on this one. Um, Cheney created a world that was a lot of fun uh, with hints of depth that made you realize that the world was bigger than just the slice you were seeing. Um, so his universe did feel real to me, and it was gripping enough that I kept going and I lost myself in the story. Um it had a very consistent canon, which obviously I like because if they mix up in-universe rules, it like will suck you out of the story. That's like the one thing that'll make me put a novel down. It's like if you can't keep your story straight, why should I? Kind of thing. Uh, obviously, you know that's an extreme reaction, and um, it has to be really bad for to trigger that. I mean, minor things about eye colors changing, like crap happens. That doesn't bug me. But I'm talking about like the large, large things do. Um, so I really like that. Um, so we always heard uh, a lot about the, so it's one of the things I didn't like about the world. Building. So they talk a lot about, for instance, the blaster that Captain Hughes carries. However, we really get, never get told what it looks like. And so I'm a guy and I've, I've harped on this at every time we talk about bookers. I like those details. Uh, see doc, I can see you doing it. So like, but tell me so about the hard to describe it, a blaster without pulling in either a large, large background of what weapons modern weapons look like so now you're throwing them out of the story and it's really hard so like how are you going to describe a blaster right without referencing either a pre-existing earth-based reality based in reality real world based ip like star wars 
or Star Trek or, uh, or how are you going to do it without referencing old earth weaponry? That's true. And I, I get your so, point. I, mean, I, I also get it, well, why some people kind of leave it out, particularly because Kenny's not like a big gun guy. Like it's not really part of his branding. Like if Larry Korea wrote a story or Laurel K. Hamilton wrote a story and they didn't describe a gun and or a weapon in some short shape or manner more, I'd be like, come on, did you write it or did you pay somebody? Because that's <laughs> part of their branding. I mean, and they know a lot about those things. So, and that's okay. part of the branding that they have with their ser different various series and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. And I get, there's a, there's a modern trend in storytelling that is definitely light on the details. So you can fill it in with your imagination. There's even a literary critique name for this. That I can't remember from my days as an English major. Um, but for all I know, the blaster looked like a banana and it shot protoplasm. All the more we reason just... not to be an English major. You forget anything that might've been useful. Well, that's more of getting blown up a couple dozen times. But like like I said, for all we know, it was a banana that shot protoplasm. We just don't know. And obviously that's ridiculous on its face. But I'm a guy that likes the details. So I I, I like that information. Um, okay. Obviously, that's that's a me thing and not a, a book thing. So, you know, in all fairness. So. Are you going to you're going to tell me I was wrong again? I'm here. No. For OK. I, I was um, going to tell you that you like really long paragraphs. I do. And like I said, uh, there's not Faulkner. much. Obviously, you can overdo the re the details, too. Like, there's a happy medium. <laughs> <clears throat> and you mentioned Faulkner. Um, so, like I said, we've talked about this in other reviews. But I, I do feel like that critical information would have helped flush out the canon for me. Um, and so if Cheney's listening, hint, hint, give me more details and I'll buy more of your books. Oh, who am I lying? I'm going to buy them anyway. Um, but yeah, overall, I think the world building was well done. I just, that one little thing that bugged me was the lack of details. At the end of the novel, I really couldn't tell you what, what Hughes looked like in, in a general sense. And, and other authors that I absolutely love the series and I've read them multiple times do the same thing. So like, that's just, like I said, that's a me thing. Um, if you think I'm wrong and you like those, the the style that don't give you as many details, tell me in the comments so we can we can argue about it on Facebook. Because that's what you do on Facebook, right? You argue with people, and then you get banned for having different opinions. Hey, um, I got—I had somebody argue with me for agreeing with them. That's even more hilarious. And literally, um, my friend got was she's agreeing with you, and I went. They're like, well, she's not saying anything, and I went, I'm not going to have an argument of who's more agreeing. Like, <laughs> I have other things to do with my life, like wash yeah. my hair, go to the bathroom, anything else. So when it comes to the description um that we hinted about it with the world building because they do overlap but i think there was just enough visualization to get the job done which is what you were talking about you could overdo it uh or you have to bring in earth canon when earth is a mystery and a, an enigma in this world um but i at least tell me what the characters look like um what he did describe though that i really think this is one of the areas in description chain he did really really good uh, and I remember you and I talking about it because that's why it's in the first um, the review that I've got to update since the box set is out. But he did a really good job of describing the sensory spectrum. So sight, sounds and smell of how the world felt like he described that really, really well. Oh, no. Just not As a reader, you feel like you're there. Yeah, you could almost smell the plasma or whatever from the blaster because he doesn't really get into what it shoots either. Um, and, and there's definitely a danger because if you talk we about guns. Pineapple pizza. So with guns and horses, those are two examples of things. If you don't know everything about it and you get just a little bit wrong, everybody and their brother is going to come out of the woodwork to tell you how wrong you are. So I get to a point why he chose to emphasize where he did. Um, but but anyway, so he did a good job describing how the world felt. I just I would have liked a little more. Um, you know, I'll get to the overall rating for the book writ large, but this is four out of five grenades for me um, on the description and world building. But everything else I've dug so. You, know, you can't win them all, right? Um, so what did you think about the narrator, Luke Daniels? So you well, said you've listened to him in a lot of things. I like a lot of Luke Daniels narrations. Um, I do get what you were saying about the Slurpee thing. Uh, and I think sometimes they br uh, narrators will bring stuff in like that just because it's better than saying he said, she said all the time. Slurp. He slurped. He slurped. Okay, yeah, I get the point. Yeah. So... And Sometimes I wonder if if authors do a uh, almost a separate script or novel for their uh, narrators. 
No, when I wrote the review and I went back to review for this episode, I went, he actually, he just made the sound of the slurping that, that he wrote the onomatopoeia for, which is a, a word that describes the sound. So boink, clap, right? Um, look at me using my big words. I have to, I spell it so badly every time. Um, Google's like, what the F, J-R? Yeah, no, you tried uh, telling me that and I, I went, uh, I don't think that's a word. Yeah. Um, I, and everybody realizes the thing. You even do it. You just don't realize. A lot of people didn't realize that it's a real thing until like my narrator taught me, not my narrator, my editor taught me that word. So cheers to you, Lauren. Um, but so I, I do think like I get why he did it. And, and I get from a perspective. And the other thing to remember when you're listening to an audiobook, dear listener, the way authors have written or the way authors write has changed. The market has changed. So the fact that there's m more people are listening than reading these days because the world is so busy. Um, people have started writing different. So like when you're reading the um, conventional wisdom is that he said, she said, it, your eyes skims over it. Okay. And you yeah, don't but I, I will say this one, master level storytellers like Anne McCaffrey, Elizabeth Moon, Jody Lynn Nine, um, David Weber, they, they were already eliminating the junk words like he said, she said, and putting in more contextual words or just skipping them entirely. And Mercedes Lackey, Larry Dixon. I can go on. Would you like me to go on and prove you wrong? No, I mean, not everyone does it. And your eye does sort of glaze over it. And there are some traditional authors that have been around forever that still haven't changed. Um, and, and they still do those words. And when you're reading it, you, your eye does skim over it. But when they say it, it becomes more noticeable. So a lot of authors have started changing how they write and focusing on things like word echoes, the same word in the sentence, because now when you say it out loud, it sounds odd. Um, and so it's one of those things where, you know, depending on when the book was written, you, it, it, it's not necessarily fair to judge an author against it if that wasn't the, the medium people were reading, right? Like, yeah, that's like complaining about the ser TV series was too long because you wanted a movie instead. Like they're different mediums. But that's that's you know that's that's getting a little more into the weeds of the creative process than we normally do. So we're just gonna, we're gonna move on. So I thought Luke did a great job. He's one of my favorite narrators, just like you. Uh, I love the voices he does for the various characters, uh, and he handles whoever does his post production work for him does it superbly. Um, if I could afford him, I'd hire him too. Uh, the most important question, though, Doc, do you feel like he's a good fit for the story? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I went a little nuts on this because I love audiobooks because it's, I get really passionate about audiobooks and ebook format because I, so when I was in high school, I couldn't read, well, I read, but I like, you're so busy doing the coursework. You don't have as much time to read just books that are fun. Right. And then you go to college and grad school. And it's the same way you're reading all the textbooks and, and I'm a history nerd. Those books were fun, but it's not the same thing as reading a good romp through space, right? Like the, the speculative fiction stuff. And so I promised myself when I'm out of college, I'm going to read a book just because I want to read it and no other reason. And then I got hurt. And then it's like I went almost two or three years where I couldn't read anything. It just hurt too much. It hurt my head. Uh, and so when I found um, ebooks where I could magnify the heck out of the print, dude, that was like finding gold. And then I found audiobooks. And I'm like, wait, somebody will read it to me? Winning. Um, and so like for me, like I, I get really passionate about that. Um, and so I, I, I go a little overboard on those descriptions, but, um, I don't think you could have found anybody that did a better job for Jace, uh, and company, um, than him for the area book. Although I will say in the beginning, so I found Luke Daniels through the Ember War series by Richard Fox. So it was a little strange at first hearing, uh, Luke read Jace Hughes. Cause I was like picturing like, wait, was this some sort of, uh, eerie thing where the universe cracks open and your favorite stars appear in the wrong sitcom? Like it was just a little kind of weird uh but once i got past that like i really dug it i was able to forget mm -hmm. the past affiliations pretty quickly and just just dive in um the performance was just as good as his others but uh, luke like you said he's a professional uh, and he's good at what he does so I, I think you know he did that um i will say he's one of those why hasn't he won more awards kind of performers when you hear him do his audiobooks uh and you've had a few of them like that too that you really like you're like these guys are awesome how are they not getting all the awards um, and there are audiobook awards. So uh, the biggest thing for me with audiobooks, his accents were consistent. Did you like the accents he did or did you just sort of gloss over it? Well, with my hearing thing, I don't always get the accents as much, but I did like them. The voices were definitely distinct 
from each other and consistent, which to me is honestly more important than even an accent being consistent. So there's that same tone of voice, that same feel, because honestly, there's a certain energy that they bring to each different character in their voice that really needs to be consistent unless there's like a reason why. Yeah, that I get that. Sense. I mean, I, 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 think the, I think one of the funnier times was I was listening to an audiobook and it was a char- the, it was the same narrator. I, I don't know if it was a Luke Daniels book or not, but it was the narrator had to imitate the char- had to be the character imitating another character. Oh my God. Like that's the breaking the fourth wall right there. And it was like, because they were, cause you know, like we'll mock, like I'll, 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 jokingly go a little bit and JR, blah 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 type thing and it was one of those kind of scenes and it was very challenging <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure the narrator <laughs> read it and was like oh you mother now I want to have a character mocking a character author. mocking another character so he's doing Bob mocking Linda mocking Jim like like I could that would be hilarious I want to see if I can fit that into a story now I uh, but my narrators might quit after trying to do that yeah, my narrator might quit. <laughs> Veronica's <laughs> gonna be like, "You're fired. I'm never working with you again." <laughs> but uh, and, and if, you, if you're wondering about the uh, the narrator we're talking about, uh, Veronica Gigarera, and I'm probably butchering her last name. No, she I just think we actually got it right that time. I don't know. Yeah. She just laughs and rolls with it. Uh, she's an awesome narrator. Voices by V. If you want to check her website out, like I love everything she she does. I've bought books that I wouldn't normally read just because she was reading them. Um. But um, but yeah, so other than the issue with the hard candies that we talked about, but I'm not going to ding the narrator when that was what was written. And the narrator, uh, excuse me, the author did that to break up the he said, she said, and to give some personality to the character, like to build more in. Uh, it just, it's one of those things that gets to you a little bit, but I, it's not because he wrote it. It's the act itself. Like if my kids were doing that, if, you if really anyone around don't like me. You don't do you? No, I'm going to be like, dude, close your freaking mouth. Then you close it for you. My and then my mom's voice is gonna come out, and I'm gonna be like, "Oh my god!" Now I gotta ground you for making me sound like my parents. <laughs> Doc, I hate you. <laughs> so again, this this could just be a little bit, you know, of my idiosyncrasies. And in all fairness, like Doc's got an audio processing thing, so that affects how she hears. I'm just hard of hearing, and so like I also have just trouble distinguishing background noise. Um, thank you, IEDs. And so this could have just been because some of those kind of things make it harder for me to understand things like just to process the sound. So that could just be me. And if you like it, tell me, because I, I, it wasn't enough that I stopped listening. Obviously, we made Very it through 16 books. used to being wrong. <laughs> we, we made it through 16 books, so we didn't hate it, right? Like, obviously, yeah. we kept reading. Um, and so most importantly, uh, he he did, he wasn't annoying. He didn't bug me. The voice didn't grate on my nerves. There are some audio books that I listen to. And I'm like, nope, I'm reading the ebook. Like, this was just too, it was bad. Um so like that, that your mileage may vary but he didn't commit the cardinal sin which is my only real complaint he didn't sound like a robot some narrators when they read it it's like oh my god i could have siri do a better job for me i could have alexa do a better job for me you know what i mean yes i do know what you mean so when i have to worry about something saying you know the the book giving the hey alexa experience to my the, the surroundings um, i said that out loud and everyone's gonna be typing in frantic hate mails because it just activated whatever device they have but like <laughs> uh it didn't bore me and it didn't sound um robotic so like i really love this i'm gonna give this six out of five if that's not cheating otherwise five out of five i don't know we'll, we'll just go I with it and move on created the rules so and then we're gonna make it up as we go and change it as we feel see fit and all right, so this is a, a story, and I've noticed a trend because Doc and I have done a few book reviews together. Not all of them have made it to air uh, for various reasons, but um, the, the one of the major themes in this story is in a theme in a lot of stories we like, which is the concept of found family. Um, so do you want to elaborate on that, Doc? Because you're the one who mentioned this one. Um, I don't know what you want me to say. Like, I, I, I think we all know what a found family is. It's... You know, sometimes family, sometimes the family we're, we're gifted with at birth and by genetics isn't 
I mean, so a lot of it times you go with the, the authors will go with the, well, it was a bad family or it was toxic or abusive, but sometimes also it's just your life takes you in different views and ways. But, um, like I, I'm super into chemistry and no, like, don't talk chemistry in my family. Nobody else in the fit. They'll all like, they'll get like distracted. I'm like, okay, yeah, but no, but back to this. So I think fan found family is <laughs> really my favorite because as much as I love my family, there are just certain aspects of my life. My family just doesn't get. <laughs> luckily, sure. I work with, luckily, I work with a couple of people who really get it too. Well, you're a chemist. I would hope so. So yeah, I, I do. Say, and they're also chemists. And so I, that helps. I, I work with a couple of people now who, uh, you know, they, they get excited and we'll be like talking geeky solution stuff. And so, you know, yeah. So I, I liked with this theme, I like that Jace sort of, he starts off as that ro rogue loner type whose only friend is a robot or well, an AI, cause he doesn't have a body. Um, and then as he gets more people on his crew, he doesn't want to like them, but he slowly does. And I like seeing that growth. Like you, you learn a little bit about his backstory, but giving you that information would be a spoiler. So, you know, he, he comes from less than ideal beginnings uh, with family life. And then he sort of turns it around and he finds his own family and his own sort of a reason to go on. Uh, which I really, really like. That's a, that's a sort of a major theme. I think a lot of people that were in the military, that sort of resonates because like I'm closer. Well, I was closer with some of the guys I served with and the people that are related to me by blood. Uh, and that's, so that's something that I just really sort of hits home because I get it right. Like there's something, so there's this song that it's actually a rap song by a, a guy that was in Iraq when I was in there. And one of the things that he's talking about, like it's, this whole song is called welcome to the infantry. And it's uh, talking to a new private joining um, an infantry unit with all the advice he wished he had gotten. And one of them is, you know, you're going to suffer in the Middle East, but the beautiful thing about it is your friends are going to suffer too. Like that, that shared experience that <laughs> builds bonds and only a grunt's going to be like, it sucks. I love it. And I'm glad you're miserable with me. Like, but that, that the idea behind that, the sentiment behind that, that like something about your experiences unifies you in ways people that weren't there can't understand. It's the whole reason the jokes that people will say, oh, you had to be there uh, at the end of a joke. And mostly that's my excuse because I told the joke badly, but there is some truth to it, right? Like that some yes, things- you do tell the joke badly. Fair. The, the joke is that I'm not funny. Like I get it, but I just roll with it. Uh, but there is, unless I'm not trying to be funny and then people laugh like I'm hysterical, I don't get it. But again, not the therapy hour. But this is one of those things where like, you know, your experience is good, the bad and the ugly, right? Like it creates a, a shared event that, that can unify in ways that blood alone cannot. So I really like that in a story, but anything more than that, we're going to end up giving spoilers and we really, really didn't want to do that. So I'm going to move on. Are you satisfied? I am satisfied. All right. The next theme was mine and uh, it's never trust the government. So I'm going to let you see what you think. And then I'm going to go dive off the deep end. So go on. Um, I mean, I'm not sure what you're saying about, I definitely don't trust the government. Remember recruiters are paid by the government. Fair. So um, I think that there's a certain level of, yeah, anybody who's promising you something like use your critical thinking skills. So if it's if it doesn't smash this pass the smell test up too good to be true. And I will say, in all fairness, we're talking about never trust the government in the context of this books. I don't know Cheney's political views. He's pretty apolitical on Facebook, much like me. Um, you know, he just he keeps it funny and witty and he moves on. Like, you know, we both recognize yeah. there are readers of all stripes. Like I literally have one of the guys on my newsletter who's a card carrying communist, American Communist Party. And I think he's wrong. But I mean, I think but honestly, any, any, regardless of what political end of the spectrum you're on, you shouldn't blindly trust any organization that's out for your soul good. Uh, but I, I only so mention that to say that when we're talking, we're talking specifically in the context of this book. And that's the only politics Cheney ever really talks about. You're going to find no stand in for it, insert political figure on either side here. Cheney doesn't do that. Just this is more writ large, much like, you know, you hate it. Well, if you're wrong, you hated the empire in Star Wars, right? It's just, it's in universe stuff that he sticks to. Although 
I mean, I could make an argument that the Jedi were a terrorist, but you know, let's move on. Um, I'm going to drop that bombshell and see who comments in there. <laughs> I know we're going to get hate mail from Nick Garber. Um, but I, I do, I do, you know, I do think that's one of the overarching themes for Chase Hughes. Um, and this comes partly as a result that he gets on the wrong side of big government on his quest with his fi- found family that sort of spans the arc of 16 books. Um, in the end, I think this theme partly confirms my own libertarian biases. Um, I wish we could go on a little bit more about how much we hated the union, which is the main governmental force. No the, spoilers. But Doc says no spoilers, so we're just going to leave it there. Nobody um, wants your, you to spoil their fun, JR. This is true, and there's no wrong fun. So if you disagree with me, like I said, this is a fun discussion, but but I definitely got the just leave me alone. Like, if I could get good Wi-Fi in the middle of nowhere and be a hermit, like, I'm down, right? Like, let me build my mud hut and call it good. Okay, maybe not mud. I like air conditioning. But you get the drift. Like, I, I get that sort of sentiment. And so it really resonates with me. But enough about politics, because, you know, if I start talking about the union, you're going to get mad. The other large theme, this is another one. I'm not going to get mad are... about the politics. I'm going to get mad about the spoilers. If you want to talk spoilers, go to the Facebook group. JR will totally mad talk spoilers with you. Well, well, we'll have to find a way that we don't ruin it for other people. But No, yeah. you just put at the head of the thread, this is a spoiler thing. And then it's consent on their part if they keep reading that thread. Fair. So the other major theme, when this was another one you you saw when we talked about it way back when, was the idea of good versus evil. Um, I, I think, you know, you, it's pretty self-explanatory what that is. I don't know that we need to harp on that too much because any examples are spoiler territory. And yeah. you threatened to cut my head off if I did that. And I kind of like it attached to my neck. No, so. I threatened to send you pineapple on pizza. That's more torturous in a violation of the Geneva Convention. I'd almost rather you just cut my head off. See, I am mean and evil. All right. So, uh, Doc, this is the part where we talk overall what your thoughts are on the novel. You know, I I enjoyed it. I love Cheney's stuff. They feel very fun and popcorn-y and that there's... There's a lot of action. You don't really get bogged down. You don't even really get bogged down in the action because the action doesn't last for so long that you're like, please just be done. Yeah, that's one of those things where... There are no long paragraphs about waves of missiles. And that's one of those things where understanding human biology matters because some of the times I've, I've read books and I'm like, does the human... Like, is it just me or does the human body not bend that way? Right? And like some of the stuff they're having people doing and I'm like... Like it's almost like they've either never done it themselves or they can't block a scene where they use like action figures to figure out how to make the movements look believable in the description. Um, so yeah, I, I think you know that will aside from being overly long, being overly descriptive in ways that aren't believable is also a problem. So like again, if you have somebody's knee bending in the opposite direction, it bends, like that's not real unless you're saying they broke it, right? And I, I think that's one of the things Cheney gets right. Um, I, I think he's got enough um, real world experience just from his time in the Air Force that um, and I don't I assume Air Force takes some level of combatives in their basic training. I think that's pretty generic. I don't know. I like I, I just don't know. I know that um, I know people in the Air Force who have, but like, you know, they were high speed people like Casey is else. So. Well, re- regardless, if it was uh, self-taught or Air Force taught, he seems to understand the concept of body movement in context to physical altercations. So it definitely works. So you're right. That That is why it felt so believable. Yes. All right. Yes. Did you have anything else about the uh, the overall thoughts on the book? No, I enjoyed it. It was so, fun. I'm probably going to go back and uh, go through the book series again. <laughs> I've just been a little busy, so I didn't do it before this. Yeah, um, I will say, um, like we mentioned, that Jay and Cheney was an Air Force vet, um, which I like supporting other veterans. You know, it's just sort of our thing. Um, it is. That's also why he doesn't talk a lot about guns, because it was Air Force. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't listen. Or he'll say, you know, he note. might be talking. He, it, it, if you read the Messenger series, he talks a lot about chairs. This is true. Somebody's going to uh, get me. <laughs> Yeah, his fans I mean, are going to come really out. Loved, I really loved it. Uh, yeah. uh, so, and I love the Messenger series too. Uh, I actually gave one of the books because 
they they have a very unusual name for the main character in the messenger series and i he which he writes with terry maggart and i gave one of them to us when the book one to a friend uh, to a friend of my son's because he has the same name <laughs> and he thought it was the coolest thing that's fair um one of the things that this is a both a ding and not a ding um is that ding dong ding the book was so fun that you didn't want to stop, but there was enough salty language that you definitely couldn't listen around the kids. Um, so that that was a little annoying. I'm like, man, I want to keep listening, but the little ones are here, right? So, like, you know, take that with a grain of salt. If you're by yourself, um, no big deal. If you got kids listening, eh, it does have some salty language. Um, you know, we've mentioned, so I won't uh, harp on it, the light on the details. That's just a pet peeve of mine. I really love the more. This is just Cheney style. He writes more of a pulp style story. Mm -hmm. And I love those two. And there's perfectly like there's room in the market for both. That's not a ding. I just I prefer the details. But I read it and I kept reading. So clearly it wasn't so bad that it couldn't keep me. Um, so yeah, that you know, it, it is what it is. Um, the one of the major annoyances for me, or not really a major minor, whatever. It was one thing that annoyed me a little bit was the lack of proper naval terminology. The main character is calling bulkheads walls and the, the deck. He's calling it a floor. And space should sort of probably use naval terminologies for a spaceship. I did grow up in a Navy town. So, you know, hearing vessels using proper terminology, like when that doesn't happen, it always catches my attention. Um, but in all fairness, traditions could change. So you could argue, well, you know, what if they don't call it that in the insert whatever star date this is, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is just me nitpicking probably for the sake of the review because – like no book is perfect, not even mine. So, you know, if you can't find at least one thing that there's room for improvement, you're doing a snow job. And um, yeah, like that, the, you don't come here for that, right? Like you want us to be honest and, and critical. Um, and there, there is such a thing as you snarkily put in the show notes and I'm going to claim it. So people think I thought of it. Um, there is such a thing as an unreliable narrator, which, you know, you could argue since the way he wrote the the POV, like, maybe it is us bulkhead in that universe and jace just chase just doesn't do it right like which is a fair you know get out of jail free yeah, i like pointing that out because when man when i was in the army i loved calling uh, any bathroom off post a latrine and any latrine on like on post a bathroom just to Whoa. annoy just to annoy my aren't fellow army friends yeah and so this is gonna get <laughs> Yeah, you would do that, but that's part of your charm. So this is one that's going to get a little dark. So if you, you need to jump ahead a few seconds, we understand. But so this is an action adventure, which obviously means people die, right? Good, bad, whatever. We're not going to spoil who dies, but people die in action adventures when you got military sci-fi. The military sort of gives that away. Um, and my, my real complaint, the only one that I would have, which would potentially ding a rating for me, is the character's lack of reaction to that killing. Um, I see this problem a lot across fiction, so it, it, but it does stick out to me. So I've been in situations where you were required to unalive somebody uh, when I was in Iraq. And no, yeah, no matter how like jaded you become, that has an effect on you. And if it doesn't, I think we call you a sociopath. So, and I don't think Chase was written like a sociopath. But the fact that he doesn't have as much of a reaction, it bugged me a little bit. Um, and so it doesn't feel like Chase had any remorse when he killed people. That could be part of the Han Solo, uh, Mal Cooper. Was it? No, not Cooper. What's Mal's last name? The Firefly guy. I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, um, Mal. Like, Captain Mal. Yeah, that's all I remember. I don't, know. I don't ever I don't know. call him anything else. But yeah, so like killing definitely has an effect on you and in general. So like, it, it bugs me when it's not there. Um, but again, this this is a me thing, and you might not even notice it um, without the similar experiences. So, like, you know, we won't harp on it, but that's definitely something that bugs me. Um, I like the idea, which is the concept of the grand adventure trying to solve one of the mysteries. That really sticks a chord for me. Um, I like that sort of Da Vinci Code in space. Um, the fact that it was written in first person definitely made you a lot more connected to the adventure, which I did appreciate. Uh, which is why we you mentioned the unreliable narrator earlier. Um, but but when you combine it all together into a series of books, you get a long arc that's fun. Like it's it's definitely each novel is leading to the next, which leads you to the well, conclusion. Well, it keeps it fresh, which is hard to do in massive series. Yeah. And so this is definitely a, a pulpy popcorn comfort food kind of read, except for you don't regret it because there's no calories. Um, so like I definitely I never regret popcorn, JR. Only you do. 
Well, you know, I got to get skinny again. So doctors are a thing and they like you to live. I just don't uh, talk to my doctor. <laughs> fair. Fair. Uh, I, I got talk enough... to doctors all the time. Darren Kennedy, Davis Asura. Not those kind of doctors. <laughs> they are those kind of doctors. We just don't talk about those kind of topics. Fair. When you have as much internal injuries as I do from getting blown up a few times, like they want to keep track of you to make sure everything, you know, Somebody strap mail doesn't move around, that sort of you. thing. Um, but so I, one of the things I really liked about the story, and I didn't really know where to put it, so I'm throwing it in the overall, is this was definitely the uh, everyman tale um, aspect in this story, which I really like reading about. So it's basically like a David versus Goliath kind of story overall, except for, you know, you have blasters instead of slingshots. Um, while Chase wasn't quite the everyman, he was cl definitely close enough that you end up rooting for him and cheering as he takes the bad guys down a peg or two. Um there's definitely one of the union officers whose face you definitely want to punch. Um, I can't give you too much because again, Doc's going to kill me. Uh, and then sickness stab you. Officer's face is very normal, though. Um, but luckily, Jace wants to do the same thing, and so you get a, uh, that vicarious thrill out of living through him, which is cool. Um, isn't that why we read fiction in the first place to escape the mundane, well, the mundane life around us? What do you call it, Muggle or something? I don't know. Mundania. Um, yes, that. So. Uh, now I'm going to get Doc giving me all kinds of hate mail and sacrilege comments, but I really like the science in this story. Um, or at least the way Chase, uh, Chimmy Cheney explains uh, like the science that is faster than light travel. It has just enough hand wave him to keep you happy about the details, but without going so crazy that you're like, no, that's not how science works, kid. Um, so it's a perfect blend. This is one of the times where a lack of details actually works for me. Yes. Uh, is when you're talking about future science. Um, cause if you go too on the nose and science changes, you've instantly dated the book. Right. And this is definitely well, the other thing is if you go too far on the nose, then you're getting more into the hard science fiction, which is yeah, fine, yeah. but I don't think it really blends well with Cheney's style of story. I don't think so either. And so I like that. I mean, this is the um, second Cheney series I've read. His series is definitely tend to be fun. Yeah, he's and, definitely a pulp style. And again, just so we're clear, that's not a derogatory thing. It's just, it's, it's you know, a way you classify a book. They're ones that are meant to be fast-paced and fun. Well, yeah, and um, I mean, it's like, you know, David Weber's on hard sci-fi, and The Expanse is hard sci-fi. I loved them. I enjoyed them. But there are just times when, you know, you want chocolate versus caramel. There are times when you want a steak versus seafood. Yeah, and so one of the things we'll talk about is that the, the length on this one, I, I think, I don't know, like, how many words were in each novel. But it, they all definitely felt short, but it's because the adventure was so long. Uh, and when I tried to do the quick math about the number of words in each story based on the number of pages, like clearly they weren't that long and they weren't math? that short. I yeah, know. Don't tell anybody. They'll take away my blue cord. Um, but like it didn't feel like they were as long as they were. So it definitely felt fun. Like you mentioned when you were talking about reading them at work, like it's definitely like, holy crap, we've, I've read how much already. Uh, so that was that was kind of cool. Um, he's one of the few authors I've seen pull that off that makes a long story feel shorter. Yes. Um, and while I don't normally read the pulp because I do like those details, like I don't regret reading this one. It was a lot of fun. I don't, I haven't regretted reading any of Cheney's. Um, so maybe I'm just picking the wrong pulp stories. You know, it's always, always a fair critique, uh, critique. Um, cause you know, if he can do it, clearly other people can. Um, I definitely feel like you were hooked on the series from the beginning, which you, like both of us have sort of hinted at. Um, so um, we went through 16 books. So yeah. Yeah. So what did you think about um, eh. one of the things I like about, and then you can sort of riff on it and I don't want to put you on the spot, but one of the things I liked about this book were the way he took the tropes and he twisted them a little bit to make them his own, but it didn't feel derivative. He used all of the right ones in just enough of a different way that it's it's like everything else, but not. Um, so I, 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 I like that. Kind of classic Cheney. He he does that with stuff like if you read the Messenger series, it's very very Gundam anime feel, and he doesn't. He, so he pulls tropes not just from like standard literary tropes either, which is nice. Well, he's talked about before that he's a huge anime nerd. Like one of the oh. series. When we were shopping some series around with him in the past, like he, he talked about, like I like this anime. Watch this as show notes to give you the feel I'm looking for. 
uh and then schedules didn't work you know life happens but but anyway like, he's definitely into the anime i found shades of like you mentioned with mal cooper so I, I agree with you the shades of firefly were definitely in there with a little bit of uh outlaw star that inspired it and that's one of the few i've watched so don't expect more of these references from me people um i definitely think there was a little bit of star wars meets indiana jones uh, which I'm stealing from your show notes, which you glossed over because you wrote that down. But I'm totally taking all the credit. All right, Doc? I'm used to you. <laughs> and then this is one we stole from the reviews uh, when we were prepping. We read some of the reviews on the book. Is they definitely, some of the reviewers called this Andromeda meets Battlestar Galactica in the perfect mashup. And I can definitely see that too. Uh, what, yes. do, what about you? you? Can you can you get that comparison? Yes, but I also really enjoyed Andromeda. So So did I. Uh, that's the guy that did Hercules. I forget the actor's name, but he's Sab Chris Sabo, I think. Kevin Sorbo. I was oh close. God. I got the alphabet right, the right language. That's a start. Uh, anyway, so on a scale of one to five um, nuclear bombs, what would you give this? Uh, I would give it a five. Okay. Uh, especially with the sale going on. I, I mean, if, you, if you're listening to this... And I mean, you're definitely getting your bang for your buck, even and especially with the sale going on. I mean, price performance is definitely there, even at full price. So if you're like, mm, I'm not ready for it. Because, you know, if you're like me, you have a to be red pile that seems to breed. Um, yes. But it is definitely worth it. I, I you're not going to go wrong with picking this up on, on any kind of a sale. So. Yeah. So right now there's the whole box. That's a temporary sale and it's uh, it's temporary out there in digital form, but it's on sale for 99 cents from April 24th to the 26th of 2022, if you're listening, but he also did smaller box sets for the series as it went along. So book one through three, book one, four through six, that sort of thing. I don't know the exact breakup of the, of the, um, the books pairings, but there's definitely smaller bundles that you can get this at. Um, he for the audiobooks he bundled two at a time so they had enough length because uh, when he started writing this the standard was about 75,000 words for a novel that shifted to about 120 expectations so you get the audiobook long enough that people thought it was worth a credit which is why you see some changing in book lengths throughout the series um, but even if you bought it you know in the smaller bundles or one at a time I, I didn't regret it because when I bought the book the bundle wasn't out right like I bought them all individually or I read them in KU for some of them. Um, so I, I definitely think five out of five for me. And uh, nine out of five if you can catch it when it's 99 cents. Because holy bejesus, that's a good price. Um, you can't you can't ask for a better steal. Um, so thank you, Chaney, for being so good at the sales, man. He does that periodically. If you follow his newsletter, I'd recommend it. I think it's Variant Press is his website. But um, with look up Jay and Chaney, you'll, you'll find him. Um, I definitely think he routinely does sales because, you know, he recognizes people were on a budget. Uh, if you, we've had him on the show before and he's talked about like when he was active duty air force, he never left the base. He saved all of his money so he could afford to spend the time not working to write this. This was the first series he wrote when he started writing. Uh, and so he definitely hasn't forgot what that felt like, you know, eating crap because it's what you could afford. So you could bank money. Um, so like if you, if you like a good price, definitely, definitely follow him and check him out because it's worth it. And he's a, um, he's a really nice guy. He is. And he'll bend over backwards to help out other authors, which, you know, not everyone does. You know, they pull the ladder up after them or they try to. Um, and I'm not like naming names. It's just a generic issue. Um, and he's not one of those people. He's the rising tide lifts all ships kind of guys. Um, so overall, I think um, if this book sounds like it's up your alley, you, should, you definitely won't regret buying it. Unless it keeps you up all night and you're late to work. And then your boss fires you because you became a book addict. Um, Cheney's, uh, excuse me, hey, Doc's stop. Lucky. Stop. Stop. Doc is lucky that her boss understands. But if you do become that Cheney addict and you're mad that you lost your job and then you track him down and you try to climb in his windows JR, and he shoots you. JR, his, shut up. It's funny. I practiced this all night to get, you're going to ruin it. Okay. On this one, your teenage son is right. You're not funny. You know, you're all fired. I, this was glorious. Hit me up in the DMs and I'll give you my little blurb. I'll put it at the end of the book review. I was funny. Dang it. 
But anyway, it's a good story. I really, really I liked it. Felt you stomp your foot with that one. <laughs> yeah, and I will say that when I make That's book reviews, job. I realize that all of us, you know, the world is a little crazy right now. Funds are tight. So if I say it's worth buying, like I'm, I'm keeping in mind that, you know, that's me recommending you spend your own money. So I don't take that lightly. And I, I do think you'll enjoy this book. But clearly, uh, the interview is winding up. So, Doc, what are you working on? JR's right jokes are run dry. Ouch, Doc. You wound me. But uh, I understand Dragon something something is happening. So what are you working on right now? Um, I have we're working on the virtual paneling for Dragon Con. And, you know, page to stage, which is a costume contest. And maybe I'll bring my costume director on here and she can talk. That about, would be give a us lot a, of the low down dirty of all the craziness that is cosplay. Um, We've tried in the past to get like the 501st uh, Star Wars um, cosplayers and some of the, the Star Trek ones. But man, getting through their PR people, like it's like they don't read their emails or something. So I just gave up. But like, well, I mean, I've, it's hard when it's a volunteer organization sometimes because life is crazy. Um, yeah. But then there's, but so I'm doing that. Um, uh, I staff with Liberty Con. That's coming up. So there's some stuff going on with that. And then I am just started. I think book eight of the Jane Yellow Rock series by Faith Hunter. And so I'm listening to that on audiobook. Um, what else was it? Oh, and I am reading for if you guys like Twisted Luck, I am beta reading right now the next book, Faded Luck. That's uh, by, by Mel, Mel Todd. Todd. Yep. Um, so I'm and working. I am losing sleep because of it because it is so. And that's not good for the rest of us. She's grumpy when she's tired. Um, yeah, JR but, had to deal with my grumpiness the other day. Um, well, if you're listening, well, yeah, it was definitely fun. But we also stayed up late the night before with an interview with James Ward um, because that man can talk when he gets talking about history of RPGs. And we were both tired. And, and, we're like, and it's really awesome. And I love it. Yeah, but me too. I was, it was the next definitely... day, like Starbucks had way too long a line. So I did not have the coffee. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, yeah. No. it's the when it rains it pours kind of and, thing. But and so, Nick was like, "Are you guys getting a divorce? Who my who gets custody of me?" And I'm like, "Jr. does." <laughs> I'm not getting a divorce, but Jr. just still gets custody of you. <laughs> so I'm working on some short stories for some anthologies. I said yes to, and then I realized, holy crap, the uh, the deadlines are coming up. At the same time, I'm editing the uh, the first book in my Portal Fantasy series with James Ward, which is a modern striker brigade goes in the middle of fantasy Egypt, and we go from there. You know, I was uh, in the striker brigade. I know, so was I. But uh, so you know, we're we're doing that <laughs> and outlining the the second novel in that trilogy, and then you know, obviously, we'll keep going as long as people keep buying. Um, so hey, you know, this reading this book and then doing the review again was definitely a, a welcome break. Um, and then in addition to that, when my mind needs a break, I've been diving into like various paranormal and urban fantasy stuff, both on Wattpad because, you know, budgets are a thing, people. Um, but I enjoy the concept enough. I started looking at those same kind of books. Can I get you all stuck on urban fantasy now that I got you to read Laurel K. Hamilton? I, yeah, hers didn't really do it as much, but like the concepts were cool. So I started looking more. Uh, and so I found, you know, and I, I like this guy's style anyway, like Cheney, Jonathan Yanez. Um, is definitely one of those upbeat writers. I wouldn't call it pulp. He's a little bit heavier on the detail, but it's definitely fast paced and fun. And he has a very positive worldview. So when I realized he had a um, shifter series, it's called Hunters for Hire. Uh, oh, that Hunter series is good stuff. And when I realized that, I'm like, dude, I'm going to give it a shot, which coincidentally, if you're listening to this, uh, on April 24th through 26th, it's on sale too, um, which is how I found it because he hit me up about the sale. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna be checking that out, because um, you know, why not? And we, we, we might even do a panel um, about like paranormal, and then some of the specifics, like with shifters and stuff. Because there's definitely some tropes, and one thing I've realized reading Wattpad is like what's common on a trope for like a Wattpad or a Kindle Vela or um, something Road. I can't remember the name of it, but there's like a pay as you go chapter, pay as you read a chapter at a time stuff. Yeah. Like all of those different platforms have different tropes that are common. And I always just generically assume that they were universal across the board. That is not the case. So each, each sort of ecosystem has their own expectations as well. 
uh, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to read Hunters for Hire. I'm going to check it out. Uh, did you have anything else you want to add before we wrap this up, Doc? No. You haven't stabbed me yet, so I'm calling it a win. Uh, but I'd like to remind you, dear listener, to please be kind and speak your mind on the reviewing platforms. Your reviews help the right readers find the right books, so do your thing. Uh, and then we will have to uh, have some of those panels. And then a quick little housekeeping, because Doc is so busy right now. She's only going to be doing one episode a week. We'll probably pare down some from two to one some weeks. Uh, if I have time, I'd like to still keep up with two, but it would be just me riding solo because, you know, she has a life and apparently her boss doesn't like her falling asleep while she's playing with chemicals. Who knew? I haven't done it yet, but I have been drinking a lot of coffee. Fair, fair. Uh, and it can be just as dangerous to have to run to the bathroom while you got stuff on the Bunsen burner. See, I know what a Bunsen burner is. Nobody uses a Bunsen burner. Hey, I took 10th grade chemistry. I know things. All right. No so, thing. That doesn't mean that you know the right thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, dear listener, this is the wrap up. We got to tell you where you can find us. We are over on the Twitters at twitter.com backslash SF underscore fantasy underscore show, Sierra Foxtrot underscore fantasy underscore show. You can email us at blasters and blades podcast at gmail.com. Again, blasters and blades podcast at gmail.com. Uh, we've got the Blasters and Blades Facebook group at facebook.com backslash groups backslash Blasters and Blades podcast. Again, backslash groups backslash Blasters and Blades podcast. That's where all the shenanigans happen. And when we drop the episodes there, you can join in the dialogue with us and we enjoy those. So do the thing and, and listen and then talk about it and share it with your friends. That helps a lot. Uh, we're, we're spending you know some time focusing on um, – growth getting a larger audience to get these you know great books to more people which is why doc wanted to slow down a little bit so we did um had the time to do some of the more creative panels get some of the bigger guests which can take a lot of coordinating on the back end because if they're big enough that everyone likes them that means they're big enough that everyone wants to book them uh so sometimes it can be a challenge to make time zones and, and all that work um, but you can join our website or follow us there at anchor.fm backslash blasters dash and dash blades anchor.fm backslash blasters tack and tack blades uh, where you can support us for as little as 99 cents a month help keep the lights on defray the overhead you can support the show over at buymeacoffee.com backslash author jr hanley again buymeacoffee.com backslash author jr hanley um, and we appreciate all the things if you put in the comment section that it is for Doc Sas or for the podcast, I will keep Doc Saska and Nick Garber duly caffeinated. They will drink until their doctor tells them they're going to have a heart attack. The coffee one doesn't That's work as I well. I don't as talk to the doctor. You know, the booze ones makes a funny bit, but I don't want you to think we're actually drinking as much as we joke about it. So I was trying coffee, but I just can't make the wording work on that one. We'll have to find something else. Give us your funny bit so we can steal it and claim it as our own, people. That's what JR does. That's but my at least specialty. He doesn't plagiarize, so. Nope, I, I most of the time give you credit. Unless it's Doc. She doesn't count. All right, Doc, bring us home. So thank you for spending some of your precious time with us. For the overworked Nick Garber, the crazy JR Hanley, I am Doc Seska. We'll be back next week. Same time, same place, and uh, enjoying all the things of nerd culture, cheesy jokes, things that go boom, and of course, torturing jr because that is really probably some of my favorite things to do no i'm kidding i adore jr he's very nice he's very sweet but man his feet are stinky <laughs> <laughs>